everyone to Everyday Therapy, a podcast with the goal of empowering you to become the best version of yourself. We hope to meet you wherever you may be on your journey to mental health and well-being, whether you're just starting out or whether you're well-versed. My name is Krista Overson. I'm a licensed therapist and clinical site director, and I'm joined by my excellent co-host, Brett Cushing, also a licensed therapist and clinical director. This is the official podcast of Nystrom & Associates, one of the largest behavioral health companies in the country. If you or someone you love is struggling with their mental health, Nystrom has over 50 clinics with dedicated helpers. Just visit us at nystromcounseling.com. What's up, Brett? Well, I'm just trying to absorb that validation you just gave me. <laughs> trying not to deflect it. Trying not to minimize it. Right, you know, you right. Say, this excellent person. Yes. So thank you. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Working on that. Yeah, we, I mean, combined together, we have 25 years of experience. Yes. Right. And and after 25 years of experience, I still got to work on myself. Like it. Me too. Every day. Every day. And that's why we call never this ends. everyday therapy because yep. it, like you said, just said it, it never ends. It never ends. So what are we gonna talk about today? We're gonna. Um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of got, forgot. I lost the thread. I got yeah. distracted. What are we doing? I, yeah. I think it's something to do with attention spans. Yes. Okay. Yes. I think you're right. Yeah. So oh, what's that over there? Yes. Squirrel. <laughs> That's squirrel. maybe we should entitle this. Squirrel. We could. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's, it is, we're noticing that we are losing uh, the ability to concentrate, have sustained concentration mm -hmm. and. I don't know if we've talked about this on the podcast before, but I know uh, one night that I was really excited. Laura and I were going to have the kids um, watch some old 80s TV shows that were like the best. They were Whoa. awesome. They don't know what good TV is. you know. No. So we were going to show them. We all sat down with popcorn to watch The Love Boat and Fantasy Island. Okay. Big popular shows in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And... I was bored to tears, like, about 10 minutes into it. It no was way. so slow. I You're could not kidding. believe it. And kind of embarrassed, you know, the the cool factor with the kids really went down. Took a, a digger that day. You were because, like, even I'm having a hard time. Yeah, they're like, you watch this? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I guess. I don't know what was cool about this. It was just that's so, so incredibly slow. That's fascinating. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure every one of us were on our Phones, phones kind of scrolling because we were oh, yeah. bored already and checked out but yeah. that's kind of our culture today it is and i think that's why it's a good topic for the podcast because i guess on average the human attention span has dropped from it used to be 12 seconds i think and now it's yes. what eight yes yes Just in the last two decades officially some claim some dispute this but okay. some claim it's actually one second shorter than that of even a goldfish How? whoa yeah a goldfish what is nine seconds? Nine seconds. <laughs> I don't know how they tested that. Put them down, watch right, TV, yeah. or you know what? Right, but, right. Uh, how long could they pay attention to their little food flakes? Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So here's one. Okay. How often do you think a person checks their phone in a day? Well, I was going to say, I think the culprit is phones, and we'll probably get into that. But gosh, if I had to guess, <laughs> I mean, this is my honest answer. Yeah. 20. Yes. Yeah. But um, that's more like probably like in an hour. Not per day. Right. I would think so. Were you asking me in the hour or the day? The, in a day. In a day? But I think you're right. You know, at that, I, I tend to underestimate. And then I know there have been studies that show it's a lot more than we realize. Yeah. Well, what is it? How many? 58. 58, 58 a day? 58 times a day. And that okay. doesn't really indicate how long we're on each of those 58 times. That's either. true. That's a lot. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Um. Okay, another stat here. 75% of people can't focus on a task without getting distracted by other things. Yes. I can okay. so relate to that. I know. I'm kind of like, I wonder what is going on with my phone right now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like right. mid-recording. <laughs> yeah, and we have all these notifications just to say, oh. hey, don't forget about me. You don't know, forget like this like is this happening, right? Insecure message from our phone, like, don't, yeah. please don't forget about me. Don't yeah. you forget <laughs> about me. <laughs> Always a song. Always a song. Stat. That's uh, my attention span <laughs> for you. So, yeah. So also the average person spends about an hour and 48 or an hour and 40 minutes on social media every day. Wow. I can do that just at night. If nothing's on TV, I can easily just oh, yeah. and zone out. Some people talk about it like this rabbit hole that you go into. And time becomes 
You just non-existent. lose track. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And, and what's weird, I don't know if it's my upbringing, growing up in a like paramilitary home or what, but I knew, and I still know, you can ask me any time of day what time it is. And I can guess within about five minutes. And I'm like always accurate. That's amazing. It is. Thank you very much. You're and um, I don't know if it's always a good thing. It's a oh. little like obsessive compulsive, you know, and I need to relax. But oh, I see. when I'm scrolling, it's weird because I lose track of time. Oh. It's almost like you dissociate from time. That and happens I think to me too. That's why it's so inviting. So that's another mm-hmm. interesting. Do you ever stat. like, sometimes I delete Facebook, Instagram, like I'll delete these apps from my phone because right. I'll have one of those where I'm like, what just happened to the last hour? Like what, where, what, what was I doing that whole time? Right. And it like freaks me out. You know, it's really cool. My I'm inspired business, my son and daughter-in-law, they do technology free days. Oh, cool. They just don't like no phones. And, yeah. And they do pretty well. Uh, until about evening. I want to you know. try that. Yes. Yeah. I want to like an experiment. To try. Yeah. yeah. Until the evening and then they. Yeah. And then yeah. it's harder. Yeah. Know? I bet. Um, so let's see. The average attention span. So people's average attention span is shorter when they're using a mobile device compared to a desktop computer. I believe that 100%. Totally. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's so accessible. Even uh, if I'm easy. using a desktop computer and I have my cell phone right next to me. It's rough. Like, right. Yeah. I almost have to like put it entirely out of sight. Yes. Oh, and then I don't know if you have a watch. <laughs> I do. So yes. that notifies you. I turned off my notifications on my watch because then it was like any text, anything, it was like coming through. And I'm like, I don't even have my phone on me. Like, yeah. I'm still getting interrupted. Yeah. I, you know what's weird is I, some, I was just in a rush and I forgot to put my phone on because it was charging. And I forgot my phone mm. on the way to some event. You know, okay. with the family. And I was just, I was out of sorts. Oh, yeah. Big time. It was just unsettling yep. is probably the word. Yep. Um, because I'm like, I don't know what if somebody calls me. Yeah. You know, exactly. uh, like, what if the president calls and needs my advice? And like, who's going to call me yeah, and right. really have to talk to me right. in that two to three hour time? But we're so used to it, right? Yeah. We're so used to being connected. Um, that happened to me recently where I left my phone at home and I came to work and I was like, you know what? I don't even need it. I have everything I need. Got my computer here at work, blah, blah, blah. Well, I go to log in and you have to do two factor authentication. Yeah. So like yeah. you have to put in a code to like actually get it. So then my, I need, I did need my phone then because yes. I couldn't get in without it. So um, yeah, yeah, a little bit of a metaphor, but I also like the word you said too. We, we feel so we're so used to being connected mm-hmm. and I want to come back to that because I think we falsely believe we're connected True. Um, and we're really, we're really not, but, uh, Yep. We had one more stat to okay. share, I think. Yep, go for it. So 90% of people admit to daydreaming during meetings. So you and I both lead meetings uh, for our staff in our mm-hmm. clinics. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know how long they're doing it, but darn it, they're doing it. And Well, and I've even um, gotten feedback when I use a visual aid. Like, I'll use a PowerPoint yeah. sometimes. Yep. Um, that really helps people. But I used to just, like talk at them for a while and I don't know how much got actually retained. Yeah. Not again, not for lack of intelligence, but just like I'm the same way. Yeah. It's like I need to have something to focus me. Well, I've thought about that too, because I do a fair amount and have done a, a lot of public speaking in the past too. And because people's attention spans every seven to nine minutes, you have to break from how you're presenting. Is that it? Yeah. And so you have to break, you need to sort of do a, a visual or you okay. have to do a story um, so you, you have to kind of break from your mode of interaction with people okay. about every seven to nine minutes. Coincidentally, it's about when commercials come. And so <laughs> I, we're very accustomed to that. Yeah. And I thought about that in terms of therapy as I was doing some research on this. Okay. I thought, you know, it's hard for people to have sustained attention. Mm-hmm. And I, I've thought about that obviously in terms of public speaking, but also like therapy. Mm. It does. A, I like, I like the to therapist. Kind of the therapist. The I, I like my client, my patient, to sort of lead, lead, mm-hmm. and I'll provide the structure. And but part of that structure, I've, I've thought, hmm, is there something worth looking into here for us as therapists yeah. during our session, right? Um, just to help people maintain attention and, and retain information. Right. Good point. So, because the average therapy session is fifty-three. 53 minutes plus, right? 
Yeah. So yeah, that's that's a chunk of time. It is, especially it's, if you need to shift gears every or kind of like change. Yeah. Things every seven to nine minutes. Yeah, I think there's <clears> lots <throat> of implications for this. Yeah. So, what's interesting too is according to the research, the average attention span has dropped from 12 seconds, like you said, to eight, and that was back in 2020. Okay. And some believe that this decrease in is actually attributed to the rise of all these distractions we have. Mm. We have so many distractions. They come from our phones, I think, primarily from our computers. Uh, yep. Because when we're even at work, we don't have our phones, but we do have emails coming in all the time, too. And, or Teams, or like teams messages. Teams messages, yeah. yes, emails, yeah. et cetera. Um, yeah, totally. And then I, I, when I was doing this, I came across some really interesting research, too, that there's this infotainment kind of packages that come in cars now. And some people are doing research on that and they're finding that even that all this information attainment, they call it infotainment. in our cars okay. yeah. is as distracting as texting. No. Yeah. Wait, so, what is it? What is infotainment? I, I think it's talking about, you know, you can get your emails coming through to oh, you while I you're see. driving, you're driving you know, or you and, text. Hey, it's not as, in a, you know, intrusive because yeah. I can hear it while I'm driving. And mm. so we get the calls, we get the texts and things mm -hmm. through our phone, through our car while we're driving. Sure. So it's just, yeah. yeah, we are, we're kind of, there's a good book. Uh, it's a book on ADHD called driven to distraction. distraction. Okay. And, yeah. Uh, I think that really captures what we're up against today. Absolutely. Does this ever happen to you where you like, I'll go to look up something on my phone yeah. and I open it up. And by the time I open it, something else grabs my attention on the phone, on the oh. screen. And I completely forget why I opened my phone in the first place. Oh, yeah. Because I'll, I'll open it and they'll, oh, I have a text. And yeah. then I'm like, wait, what was I just doing? And I, like, have to sit there and be like, I don't remember why I opened my phone. It's like, it happens to me yeah. more than I'm, more than I like to admit. Thanks. I feel like this is a support group. Yeah, right? That's very validating. For me, I will, I'll go into, like, my OneDrive and mm. I'm going to open up a folder. Yep. And it takes like two nanoseconds longer than I want. And by yep. the time I open up a folder to get in there, my files, I'm thinking, what am I looking for again? Right. I, I can't remember. And it made me realize everything is too slow today. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, for me. Yeah. Everything is just too slow. And I think part of that is computer scientists as well as psychologists. They're researching this too. Okay. And... They've been looking at it over about 20 years, okay. and the average time that a person can focus on one thing has dropped from around two and a half minutes to 45 seconds. That's insane. Yes. That's and insane. Well, then, even, yeah, yeah have ahead. you seen even like on um, YouTube, there's shorts now? Like, yes. They have videos, but then they have shorts, and like, I mean, again, I it's like chicken egg situation, like, is this reinforcing our short attention span? Is this, you know, like- yes. But I love those because I'm like, oh, it's short. Like, I, you know. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it, it, just get to the bottom line. Life right. should just be bullet points. Uh-huh. Yep. And that's really problematic, I yep. think, for me. And that kind of gets into what we want to talk next. Is like, what's the big deal? All right, so what? So what? We're getting, you know, yeah. so shorter our attention, attention span. Spans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, what do so you what, think? Why is this? What do you think? Why is this such a big deal? Um. I mean, the first thing that I think about is I think it impacts relationships. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty relational yep. and in various as aspects of my life, like even to the point where like if I'm talking with someone and they start to seem distracted, like I immediately notice that. And um, I'm sure others do too, right? So if somebody is like looking away or checking their phone or whatever, it's like, oh, they must not be very interested. But like we're just talking about, it could be a product of shorter attention span, right? It's like not about me, right? That's a really good point. And it's helping me realize you know, one of my big bugaboos is I do not like to interrupt people. Mm. And mm -hmm. so I just will not interrupt people, mm -hmm. maybe even to a fault. And I really have a problem with people interrupting me then too. Okay. And as I'm listening to you, I'm realizing that's what distractions are. Mm. When I'm talking to somebody and they are distracted by something, it's an interruption. Mm -hmm. I mean, they might as well just start talking over me in the middle of a sentence. Mm -hmm. And I notice how that affects me, just like you're saying, too. Like that mm -hmm. distraction that they experience right. that I do as well. Right. That's distraction is an interruption. Mm -hmm. And I can take that personally. 
Yep. Totally. Totally. Well, and I think it's, it's now more acceptable for someone to check their phone and like in a meeting or in a conversation, yes. like I think it used to be so rude. I think, was, right? Am, yes. am I right about that? Okay. Yes. Cause, and now it's like, what it's like, whatever commonplace you don't even think about it. Right. Yeah. You don't even have to apologize. No. Mm-hmm. But, and, but it was, it was like right. a social faux pas. Right. Years ago. Right. And now it's just almost expected. Right. Well, and actually therapy is one is like still sacred, I feel like, because I don't, I definitely don't check my phone during therapy, like when I'm, oh, right. when I'm doing therapy. Yes. And I also don't look at my watch. Part of why, I mean, you know, have you ever been talking with someone and you know, they have notifications turned on on their watch because they're like, yes. keep looking at it yeah. and not to look at the time. But they're like, not looking they're getting, at the time. They're yes. looking at text messages. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. And well, you know, the funny thing too is when we do this. Yeah. <clears throat> we believe we're so subtle. I know. Like, no one's picking up on it, but it's like, so obvious. Yeah. 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 My hairstylist even did it. Like, really? Well, I had just launched into, like, I was updating her. Because, you know, when you go to the hair salon, like, yeah. you got a dish. Um, <laughs> and I was updating her on something, and she was looking at her watch, and I was like, aw. <laughs> but anyway, so that's, that's my what? theory of, like, what you were saying. What's the big deal with yeah. our shortened attention spans? I think it has implications for relationships, for sure. I think you're right. Yeah. And I think we falsely believe this kind of getting back to that connection. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we, we think we're connected more with people. Mm-hmm. And I found this really interesting. It, we, we tend to think that um, technology, social media helps us to be more connected with more people. Sure. And what we found, there's something called the Dunbar number, which says Ooh. that we have a capacity for relationships. Okay. And introverts would be like, yeah, mine is five. I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, but they find uh, it's about 150 stable interpersonal relationships. That's our capacity. I'm so curious about how they came up with that, but go ahead. Yeah, I yeah. know. I know. I'm just going to take them at their word. Yep. And, but being online, we think, expands that. You know, yeah. I've got this many likes or I'm connected on LinkedIn with this many people. And so... Being online, we think, expands our connectedness. Mm -hmm. And yet, despite the size of people that are available to us, we Mm -hmm. still were actually at the same limited capacity of 150 people to have a sustained relationship with. Mm -hmm. And I think we we know that this 150 people that we have a capacity for, we're really not connected. I mean, really connected with. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I don't think we get into, like, past superficial sort of connectedness with people. Yeah. And so we have this capacity for 150, but we're not truly connected in any kind of real intimate way. Sure. So we go to the social media to look for more because I can get more quickly. Yeah. And I'm going beyond my capacity. Yes. And I'm still furthering this problem I really have of connectedness. Mm -hmm. I'm just, so I think we, we don't need to go beyond our capacity. We just have to work on, learning how to be more truly connected with people oh absolutely so i also find like on on social media i don't know if you've seen this we we we're just not we're really not authentic in our interpersonal relationships on social media yeah Yeah. we we think we are we're not and i saw an illustration of this on social media which was (laughs) kind of funny it was on facebook and it was two dogs okay and they could see each other through a fence yeah. And it was like a gate in the fence. And they're oh. like one on each side. And they're just tearing into our, you know, they're yeah. barking, yeah. And, you know, foaming at the mouth. Somebody opened the door and they instantly had access to each other, you know, like face to face for real. And as soon as the door opened, everything was fine. Yeah, they were you happy. Know, and, yeah, wagging their happy. tails. Yeah, wag. I think I've seen that. Yeah. That's so true. <laughs> and I think that's what, what happens is we <clears throat> present a false sense of self yeah. over social media as other people. We think we're connected. Yep. And we're, we're really not. Yep, exactly. But I like that you brought that up. I think there's a lot more that could be said about how this affects us yep. in our interpersonal relationships. Totally. All right. What else? What else is the big deal? Well, productivity. Okay. Yeah, I think That's productivity. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's. Uh, I saw somebody I was listening to and reading a little bit about Dr. Gloria Mark. She wrote a book called Attention Span. And okay. she said, uh, she, well, it, a lot of studies, I, I recommend this. Uh, she found that stress was lower without email and focus. Uh, well, in other words, like when there wasn't email interrupting people's day, their focus yeah. and sustained concentration was significantly higher when they weren't that. getting emails throughout the day. I uh, believe so, that 100%. Yeah, really concluded that emails cause stress and shorter attention span. 
And what she also found is that we lose track, like we talked about before, this rabbit hole. We lose track when we're scrolling and scrolling and scrolling. Yep. And so what um, – I don't know if it was her or somebody else that said this too, that we can trace the, actually the design of the internet to why this happens because they used to be the, the Dewey decimal system, how we do research and yeah. things like that. So people who um, started designing the internet organized information differently and mm. did it the way the brain organizes and the brain organizes by association. Okay. So that's why when you and I are scrolling now, yeah. we get all these recommendations for things that pop up oh. because it's an association. Yes. And so not to mention they're listening to us. So <laughs> so uh, what they found was that, you know, when we surf the net, then we have a firestorm of associations. Yes. I mean, just bling, 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 you know, it's kind of like yep. uh, all over the place. These associations are happening and we lose track of time. So we're not as productive. Yep. And then this leads to also attempts to multitask. And yep. I think I'm pretty good at multitasking. And as much as I want to think this and we tend to, we're not. And the studies are very clear. We that we don't we multitask or we can't. We're not. We're not good at it. Well, I think there's a myth. I think that's a myth like that about like we think multitasking is a thing. And yes. I, I think it's like, no, I think research has shown like we actually can't do two things at once. We think we can. We think right? we can. Yeah. Is that we accurate? Yeah. So we, yeah. so what happens then too in terms of productivity, we make, we, we are, we're scrolling yep. and we're losing productivity. And then we also, it takes longer when we're multitasking. We think we're saving time, but it takes longer and yeah. we make more errors Oh, I too. believe that. And so, yeah, it, it's it's really interesting when we think about our productivity. Why is this important? Yep. Quantity and quality gets seriously compromised when mm -hmm. we're distracted. Mm -hmm. Yep. Well, I'll even go to put together a presentation for our staff meeting, yeah. our bi-week or our monthly staff meeting, and it takes me longer if I insist on having my email open. You know, looking at mm. Teams like. Checking my phone, like it takes me so long. I'm like, oh, this present. It takes so long to put together this PowerPoint, and it's like, well, is it really taking that long, or is it that I keep allowing myself to be interrupted, mm. right? Allowing myself. Notice we we feel, I like what you said that. I, well, I, I intentionally myself. said it that way because yeah, <laughs> I was like, I'm so the good. one that you know needs to shut down my other yeah. distractions. But that's such a good point. Yeah. Um, okay. Other reasons why why we care, why this matters. Um, I would say performance. Yes. Um, like students with shorter attention spans may do worse on tests and struggle to retain information. So true. So that would, I mean, understandably we could say in the workplace too, if you have a short attention span, you're missing things, right? You might be making mistakes or missing mm -hmm. details, which can be stressful. Yeah. I'll give an example of that. I've got ADHD. Okay. And and people who have ADHD are uh, often have like seventy five percent of the time they have some other diagnosis as well. Okay. And oftentimes anxiety accompanies that, and the mm. reason is because, and I know this for myself and working with clients, you just sort of check out because mm -hmm. you don't have the attention, and it's not so much it's the attention; it's your brain's going so fast. Yeah. And the world is so darn slow, and so <laughs> you, you sort of check out. And then you, you're kind of, oh, what, what did I just miss? Yeah. And then there's a little bit of anxiety that comes with, oh, man, I can't believe I just missed that. And you're looking at somebody else, what happened? What did I miss? And yeah. so you kind of go through life like that on a daily basis and you mm -hmm. tend to have this stress and mm -hmm. even anxiety that, oh, well, I, I probably missed something again or I know I'm missing something. And yep. So that's pretty, pretty common. And I think we know that we're making errors then too. Right, exactly. So you don't have to have ADHD, though, to be really right. super distracted because our culture is conditioning us this way. Exactly. I think also um, it's difficult to finish tasks, right? I was talking about that PowerPoint mm. presentation. It's it's tough to get it finished because it's like I, I'm switching and I'm looking at all these different things and I'm like, oh, I got to check this. And um, so, yeah, that I think that affects my performance for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's that FOMO too. Mm -hmm. We're closely related. You know, we have this fear of missing out. Yeah. And what am I? What are we really missing out on? Probably like, nothing. Yeah. Probably nothing. Yeah, I, I read like certain you know news articles every day, and I just I read it and I think, 
do I really like need to know this? Why is this important to me? Why do I think this is important to exactly. me? Exactly. Like, who really cares? This is high school hallway banter, you know? Right. Just on an adult level. And yep. I have to ask myself, what am I really missing out on? But that is real. That fear, FOMO of fear of missing out yep. drives us to sort of interrupt our day so that I get to check my yes. notification because I could be missing out. Well, and to your point, the more that we do that, the more we switch between tasks, the more our brains are looking for something new. Yes. Right? So that can lead us to to like check our phones. Like, yes. have you ever tried to – when was the last time you actually like sat down and tried to read a book? Like, last weekend. Okay. It was, it, was, it was a challenge. Yeah, right. Because mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know for me when I do that, it's like I'm immediately like, oh, I should check on this or, oh, that reminds mm-hmm. me. You know, it's like yes. there's – even within my own mind, I'm like looking for something else, and it's like, no, nope, just stay so on. Stay I want to get book. those those um, audiobooks that kind of give you the, yes. like 15 minutes of the entire book, yeah, the synopsis. And really? but I, all right, so here I have to confess something. Okay. I just realized this is good for me. Confession is good for good. the soul. It is. I realize this as we're talking. I take pride mm-hmm. in how quickly I respond to people. Oh, I do. Like I just you mean emails, that. text. If I get a text, if I get an email, whatever, I like to just very quickly respond to yeah. show that I'm responsive, that you're important, I'm responding, I'm being productive. See, everybody, look at me. So I'm realizing, yeah, I take pride in that. But the only way you can take pride in that is to allow yourself to be interrupted and distracted. So mm-hmm. I'm going to have to work on that. Okay, good. That's a good good confession. <laughs> Thank you. I absolve you of your sins. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And I need help. I actually don't have the authority to do that, but. <laughs> that's a, that's another topic. Rate. Yeah, that's another topic. <laughs> so, what can we do? Okay? okay, yeah, for people like me and you and everybody else in our culture. So, we, we have uh, a few minutes, but it really doesn't take much to go, kind of go through this. Yeah. Um, do you want to jump in with some things we can do? Well, I know for me, this is a, the biggest one is just eliminating distractions. So, or mm-hmm. at least minimizing if you can. Yeah. So, turning off notifications on your phone. I turned off the notifications on my Apple Watch because. I just couldn't stand it. It was like, I already have a hard time. So <laughs> that helped. Um, I think closing open tabs on your computer. I get made fun of because I have so many tabs open at really? any given point on my browser. People, <laughs> if people see my computer screen, they're like, why do you have 50 tabs open? And I'm like, I'm saving it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, closing tabs when you're working on something, put your phone away. And like I said earlier, out of sight. Because if it's right there staring at me, I even turned off notifications, um, my text notifications on my phone. So I don't get wow. notified when a text comes in. Like, I, it doesn't buzz. It doesn't do the little number. You know what I have on my desk? What? Right next to my laptop on my desk. I have a little stand that ah! put my phone on. Oh, and no. it, like you said, it's looking right at me. And it's like, hey. Oh, so those are the things I would say oh, for yeah. starters. Really good stuff. Well, I think also mindfulness. Yep. Uh, mindfulness, we've talked about in the past. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can look this up on the internet. Uh, and it's really just trying to stay focused on one thing mm-hmm. in the moment. Mm-hmm. And um, lots of things you can do. One thing I encourage people to do, and I do this sometimes where I just take one object. I take a pen or I take a cup or whatever, just some sort of innocuous kind of object. And I stare at it for mm-hmm. like three minutes. Oh, and if I find myself inevitably getting distracted, I just kind of come back and I start looking at it again. And I notice it and I just notice the questions I have that come up as I'm just looking at this. And That's awesome. Yeah, just this morning, I'm kind of having my little quiet time and I'm journaling my prayers. And outside the window, we got a little bird feeder and oh. there's this little cardinal. And yeah. I just sat and I watched it. Mm. And it just stayed there forever until a woodpecker came and kind of like shoot it away. <laughs> then there was but, drama. Yeah, yeah, it was like <laughs> exciting. But Plot twist. I think mindfulness like that, just focusing our attention and practicing that. One thing I encourage people to do is count. Count to 10. Mm-hmm. As you inhale, you count to yourself quietly one. As you exhale, you count to yourself two. And then you inhale, you count three. And you do that till you get to 10, and then you start over again at one. First time I did this, couldn't get past three without getting distracted. Okay, so this and, is like stretching kind of. Yeah. yeah, and then I also taught myself not to judge myself for inner kind of these mm-hmm. these thoughts, these intrusive thoughts, and I just start over again at one whenever nice. I get distracted without judging myself. Yeah. And I set a limit, like I'm going to do this for three minutes mm-hmm. to try to build that attention. So those are all Good. kind of mindfulness things we can do along with visualizations and things like that. Good for you. I love that. Nice. Um, exercise. 
So oh. I love this one. I I don't I forgot that it increases blood flow to your brain. Mm. Like I always forget the I mean I can tell a positive impact on my mood and everything when I yeah. exercise, but I I forget that it like the blood flow overall, right? Um and I do focus better once I when I've exercised. Yeah, I do and too. It's I wish it lasted longer. Like yeah. I can feel I can tell it's wearing off after like a day. So yeah. it's like, oh man, I, I I'm not covered for the whole week if I work out once, but that's true. Yeah. Uh, um, I also think being in uh, nature. Yeah. Uh, watching super, the birds. Yeah, watching the birds. <clears throat> uh, and that does reduce stress and it reduces mental fatigue and it also increases then the attention and concentration we have. So mm-hmm. being just being in nature, which can be hard here in Minnesota this time of year because of all the <laughs> bugs. Well, yeah. And actually, that's interesting. Just thinking of the seasons here in Minnesota, at least, that nature, it's like how many months of the year are we kind of enjoying nature right <laughs> and we I, I, we just have to we, yeah. it's so important that we get out yep so snowshoes yes right and we don't dress for fashion in the winter it's no. for function so the next one here um i'm i'm just gonna say up front like i struggle with this so hydration mm-hmm. but and that has to do with both drinking enough water and then also limiting caffeine because <laughs> i think caffeine dehydrates us right yeah, I don't find that very funny, though. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm laughing because I'm like, I, you know, this is one of those that I probably just won't do. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> if right. we're just, I'm like, if maybe we're just if being honest. Maybe if I just honest, drink more water. Maybe if I drink more caffeine <laughs> yeah. somehow? No. <laughs> well, we do think, yeah, caffeine does have an effect where where mm-hmm. it does give more concentration. But for every high, there's an equivalent low. And yeah. so we have to, yep. and the sugary drinks. So I'm glad right. you mentioned that. Right. But I think um, mild dehydration actually can impair your focus. Yeah. So... If you even just regardless of your caffeine intake, if you keep drinking water throughout the day, keep a water bottle next to you. I always have like 25 containers with me at any given point. Right. <laughs> I've got coffee. I've got water. I've got whatever else. Yeah, exactly. Well, last thing's probably <clears throat> that we should mention is time management. Uh, this mm-hmm. actually helps us uh, with our concentration. So it's just breaking tasks into manageable chunks. So divide <clears throat> big tasks into smaller tasks and yep. achievable portions. Um, this actually helps prevent us from getting overwhelmed. Love it. Um, and I do this a lot. I always kind of dividing things up into like just sizable, doable little bullet things I'm going to do. Nice. Um, there's also something called the, uh, Pomodoro technique, which yeah. have you ever heard of that? I've heard, I've heard of it, but what is it again? Well, it, it actually involves working like for short bursts of time for like 25 minutes. So yep. I'm going to go 25 minutes. And it would be, you know, focused. Yep. And then you take a short break. Love and it. so you do that over and over again. Yep. And that actually enhances concentration and uh, productivity. And then lastly, set clear goals and deadlines for things. Uh, and I would add uh, also edit that. Like, hey, sometimes I make my goals. Sometimes I don't. Don't judge it. But keep setting goals. Keep setting deadlines. Yeah. And that actually can sense or create a sense of urgency. Mm. And that sense of urgency helps us maintain focus too. Like, oh, no, don't bother me. I got to get this done. Exactly. Exactly. Well, that's when that's really helpful. I think we have a lot of tips and tricks. I think if you made it all the way through this podcast with I pat yourself on the back, if you didn't get distracted <laughs> yes. and you didn't check your phone, or even if you listened to it on 1.5 speed, that is also okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, everybody. Take good care and we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you as always for listening and please be sure to leave us a review. While this podcast can't be a replacement for therapy, we hope you enjoyed our discussion today and join us again next time. Nice German Associates is always available to those who are struggling. If you find yourself in need of support and help, please check us out at nystromcounseling.com.